What is up guys, Jeff Gaming here and welcome back to my Manchester United career mode. We're getting thick and fast into the very exciting parts of the season as we're closing in on the end. We've got 11 games to go. As you can see, Chelsea have a couple of games in hand and if you've been missing the last few episodes then you've got to check them out and get caught up. And if you're enjoying the series, please leave likes and subscribe if you haven't already. But first game is against my team, Newcastle. I'll be looking to beat them very badly indeed. But uh, for this game, I'll be bringing in Daily Blind in defensive mid. Very solid defensive mid he's been this season when he's been brought into the team. But uh, yeah, our midfield's a bit unfit at the moment. They've uh, played quite a lot of games this season as our squad is pretty thin. So... Uh, Draxler's on the left, Barkley attacking mid, Blind, and I think it was, uh, what's his face, Bacali on the right. But here we are at St. James's Park, it just looks amazing at night, I must admit. Even though it's raining, but here we go. And uh, yeah, this game uh, started off very quickly indeed, the first chance here from Newcastle. It's some great build-up play, but uh, I actually can't get the ball off them. It's surprising how difficult it was to take the ball from them because they're not the best passing team in the world, but uh, they got some pretty good players. And as you'll see here, Anita to De Jong, who plays a through ball to Riviere, who can't score in real life. And yeah, three minutes in, I haven't touched the ball, and they're already 1 0 up. So uh, yeah, we really need to sort that out. Need to get back into this game, but it was a fantastic passing move. There must have been about. I don't know, 20 passes. It was a good finish from Riviere there. As you can see a few times from the replay. And it's only his fifth goal of the season. But yeah, Newcastle. Yeah, got the ball off them there. Blind in defensive mid. Playing it through for Van Persie. We're about to recover. We have a deficit, but not for long. It's a save from Krull, but look at that header from Rooney into the far corner. What a goal. He's been a bit uh, dry when it comes to scoring lately, but... Uh, He's still got it in his locker, and that's a great header, even though it was kind of an open goal. But I'll take it. One all back in the game. Twelfth goal of the season. So it's been a very successful one for him so far. But Riviere <laughs> looked like a bit of a danger in this game as De Gea flaps at that header. And uh, in the second half, Riviere was at it again. Newcastle once again quick off the mark to the start of a new half. And yeah, Riviere against Klein. There's only one winner and they're 2-1 up. What is going on here? I did not expect this whatsoever. Our form seem pretty good at the moment. Currently we're top of the table and yeah, we're losing away to Newcastle. And uh, yeah, Klein, the one thing he doesn't have is height and he had no chance. When Riviere's on him like that, it's going to be a goal most times. So once again, it had to be a recovery and once again, we did it. Traxler to Rojo on the left, playing it through to Barkley. Who's going to work it with Rojo, whip it in, and Barkley gets it back with a great header. And surprisingly, that is his first goal since the start of the season. The first game where he scored two. It's a great header to get us back in the game, but oh, how has he only got three goals? I just don't know. I've been using him as a sub most of the time, but still, you expect him to get quite a few more goals. But it's ended as a two-all draw. We did come from behind twice, so... I'm quite, I'm feeling quite proud about that, but a point, it's not the worst, uh, worst result in the world. But our scout has brought some uh, reports of some players. He actually looks quite good. That Redmond is not good enough. I've already noticed that. Neither is he, neither is Pelly. Shibola, we've looked at before. Can't really tell much from the stats. So uh, I think we should wait, reject that guy. Yeah, scout these two for a bit longer and see if they're any good. Obviously got quite a few spaces in the squad, so could potentially sign a couple. But here we go. Chelsea, They won. I think they won both their games in hand, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, they won two, and they. I think they drew the last game. So six-point lead, and we're up against Spurs, who are fourth in the table, and the Champions League places are starting to take shape. Uh, with the teams that are performing well in real life, the usual top five or six. But for this game, I thought, yeah, I'm going to bring Falcao. Falcao's been pretty good lately, scored a few goals. And, uh, yeah, thought I'd give him a go, take Van Persie away. But this is one of the most amazing moments I've ever seen in FIFA. 37 yards out, 
Oh my god, I've scored! What a free kick! I know it took a deflection, but what an awesome free kick. I thought, yeah, just shoot for the crack, and I did not expect that to go in the top corner. What a finish by Rooney. Oh, you can see it clips the top of the wall there, but it potentially could have gone in anyway. And uh, Michel Vom had no chance. I really wanted to show this off quite a few times, because... I don't score too many free kicks, and definitely not from that far out. The wall didn't jump. And, uh, yeah, not the greatest wall in the world, but Vorm had absolutely no chance. Perfectly in the top corner. Rooney's loving it, and that must be his 13th goal of the season. And he's having a great start to this episode. And that's a great start to this match against Spurs, who are potential contenders for the top four. But uh, there was this very risky moment at the end of the second half. Ericsson, who's a... Freaking dangerous player. I was sure that was going to be a red card. I panicked and just had to wipe Ericsson out because earlier on in the season, Ericsson was the main man as we lost to Spurs. But luckily, it was only a yellow card and Smalling's on the pitch. But we do have to defend from a free kick here. And it is Lamella on the ball. Uh, yeah, I was surprised it wasn't a red. I know Klein's close, but I don't think he was going to stop Ericsson. So Lamella's on the ball from the free kick. Is he going to do Rabona? No, he's not. It's off the crossbar. Oh, that was so close. What a save by De Gea. Oh, our defence there was nowhere. You can see the two uh, Man United players charging back. Why did they go straight towards the line and just forget about the ball? But fantastic save by De Gea. And bad news here. Look at Gundogan rolling around. Like there's no tomorrow. He is injured and... Let's hope he's not out for too long. Blaine's going to come on to replace him, but Gundogan's such a great player for us. We need him desperately. But another chance here, I think, for us. Barkley through to Rooney. We need to try and kill this game because Spurs are a dangerous side, but a good save from Vaughn from a curling effort from Rooney. But later on, look at the pace on the right. We've got Bakali and Klein. Them two combined. So much pace. It's so sweaty. Bakali whips it in. Falcao the sub. Oh, what a header that is. 2-0. Game over. Three points. Get in there. But, oh, Falcao just rose over the, the centre-back there. I think it was Vertonghen or not. I don't know who that is. But what a header. He just leaps so high over the defenders. And most of his goals have been like that this season. So, he's been a good addition in overall. But uh, that's the game over. Confirmation of the 2-0 victory. And that's four points on two games in episode 10. So, next game is huge. They're not doing so well in the Premier League this season, but the rivalry between Liverpool and Man United is just awesome. Gundogan, who was out for eight days, and it's actually been eight days since the last game, so I thought I'd give him a rest, give Blind a go in midfield. Smalling is going to partner Jones at the back. Valencia, who's a big game player, so he's definitely playing, will be on the right. Drax on the left, taking Yana's eye off, and... Uh, slotting Di Maria behind the two strikers of Falcao and Rooney. So it's a very strong team. And Liverpool have been disappointing this season, to say the least. Obviously, in real life, they're struggling as well without Suarez. So kind of shows they were a bit of a one-man team. Uh, there we go. Tenth position underneath Everton and Stoke. So they're really not doing well. But the table's looking very close. But once again, early on, we cannot get the ball. We cannot defend. And the other team scored. Look at this. It's a great finish, I'll admit that, but the defence is nowhere. And Coutinho smashes it home, and it's only two minutes in. It was three minutes against Newcastle, and we need to tighten up. We really do. It's shocking defending. Oh, trying to make it as difficult as possible. Bro, on the comeback trail, here we go on the right. We've got more pace again with Klein and Valencia. Look at this run from Klein. This is what he's all about, and this is why I signed him. Ball in. Rooney with the header, but no, just over the bar. And really, you expect Rooney to finish that based on uh, his performances this season. But once again, look at the shoddy defending Coutinho. And of all people, of all people, it's always him. Why is it always him? It's Mario Balotelli. Makes it 2-0. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get points here because Liverpool. They beat us. Oh no, we drew earlier on in the season. They were 2-0 up then at Old Trafford. And we came back with a last minute goal, so... I'm hoping for another comeback like that because we desperately need it to keep pace with Chelsea in the Premier League. And yeah, there were more opportunities for Liverpool. One here. Balotelli once again. Good save from De Gea. But that's the side story. Look at this. Right. Where is it? 
Top left, Yesel comes on for Lambert. And uh, you'll see what happens after this corner. Yeah, that's him going down right there. <laughs> He's injured. <laughs> yeah, I'll make a few subs, but it's after this. Top left again, Yesel's been taken off. He was on for one corner kick and got injured. <laughs> that's got to be one of the shortest uh, times on the pitch of all time. What a performance by Yesel right there, but... You'll see, <laughs> back onto the uh, serious business, we're trying to score a goal, get back into this game, a great pass and move, Rooney here to Van Persie who came on for Falcao, through Van Persie, yes, easy goal, we're back in this game, and it seems to be the striker that comes on, seems to be getting the goals, Falcao in the last game, Van Persie this game, and it's a great finish, Minule had no chance, and that's his 14th of the season, so some good competition between... Rooney and Van Persie for the top scorer, but late on we were pushing higher, trying to get the goal, but Barini really couldn't make the most of that opportunity. And sadly, that's how it ended. We've got a defeat on our on our mind, and yeah, 2-1. Really disappointing, a very slow start they scored. And we need to recover in this final game of this episode against Aston Villa, a game we really should win. And I'm expecting a win. The first opportunity went to Rooney, but the main story here is what a save. It's a strange one, it really is. You'll see from the replay. I don't know what Brad Guzan's doing here. You'll see... What's it come off? It, he's facing the wrong way. It comes off one leg and then comes off his ankle and luckily goes round the post. Oh, God. Van Persie! Oh, yes! Van Persie's at it again. 15 goals and another milestone for this amazing season he has. Overall, if I'm not mistaken, 15 goals in 23 games. That's Van Persie from two seasons ago in real life on top form. But Yanazai, he's been a little quiet this season. He's going to be a great player for, for the future, but uh, he really shows his class in this game. Look at that run, look at that cross, and look at that header from Rooney. Yanazai made that goal all by himself. The cameraman's really close there, and Rooney gets another goal. Rooney and Van Persie are absolutely amazing. Falcao's going to go back to Monaco in the summer and, I don't know, might not need another world-class striker by the looks of things. Hernandez comes back. I'm thinking about using him, so we could have a great strike force. Bianazai, next season, it will be his time, I guarantee it. Nearly scored there. His pace, skill, is just fantastic and I can't wait to use him next season when he's improved a little bit. But second half, uh, Ogbonna's just lying on the ball there. But yeah, I've Aston Villa had quite a few chances. Second one here from Delft. A couple of good saves from De Gea. Another one coming in here, header from Enzogbia. This is a world class save. De Gea, he's 83 rated now, but he's absolutely amazing. Gonna be a world beater, I can guarantee that. But later on, trying to get another goal. Bar Barkley here. It's like our first chance of the second half, and yeah, he really should have scored there, but it's not the worst miss in the world, didn't really matter, and we've won. The final game of this episode, 2-0 the filler. It was expected, but uh, they made me work for it, so that was very positive. Currently, we're seven points behind Chelsea. I'm going to say it's a three-horse race for the title, but it's looking very unlikely that Chelsea can be beaten. So, potential battle for second place between the Manchester clubs as Man City, Arsenal and Spurs have all recovered. Into the top five, Stoke and Everton are still hanging around. Liverpool in 10th. Newcastle have dropped off. I'm sure they were in the top four earlier on. They're now 12th. And the teams at the two teams at the bottom are Burnley and Leicester. They look like they're down. And Sunderland could be joining them. So, that's been episode 10. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you have. And subscribe if, if you haven't already. Next episode will be out in the next few days. So, join me for that video. And I'll catch you then. Good night.